Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video, this is video number three that I shot with Lake Speed Jr. We're talking about balancing and blueprinting. Should we do it? The importance of it, torque plate honing, all viscosity, variable cam timing. We're all over the place. We go all the way till the video just ends. So let's get to it and we'll talk about it when we get back. It's not, it's not out of part. They saw a YouTube video or something, and I bought it. Right. I bought what, what Billy's doing, and, yeah. and they're bringing these parts. And okay, I want, I want to do this. Right. Yes, yes. You'll end. It is kind of, kind of a little bit on the, on the. They'll spend so much on parts, and then oh, I want to skip on the, on the, on the, on the, on the machine work. Right. Oh, 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 I don't want to torque plate on it. Oh, well, no, no, you wanna, want to do that yeah. by the way. Oh, I don't want to balance the motor. I tell <laughs> you want to do both of those things yeah, by the way. I, I tell everybody, if you're not going to do anything at all, just balance it. Hell yeah. And he goes, well, I know, but but I want to get more horsepower. I told you, you will. Yeah, just balance, balance it. It, it. It doesn't sound. I mean, it sounds neat when back in the day balancing blueprinting, but yeah, yes, but, but there's a reason for doing that, by the way. Yes, they'll, they'll skip on some of the, the things that you spend a thousand dollars on a set of pistons without a problem, but you're going to skip on. Do you really got to put a torque plate on it? Do you really have to? Eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that brings up a really good topic of conversation, by the way. Okay. Balance and blueprinting, because if you go way back in the day, you didn't have. A catalog of race parts you could buy. Yep. Yep. So if you think about it, make maybe a, a house analogy, uh, where today's fancy parts you can just buy off the shelf and bolt them on, are you know the the modular kitchen where you can buy all the cabinets mm -hmm. and everything, yep. and they yep. just come in, they just fix it all up, right? That makes for a beautiful kitchen. But in the old days, they had to hand make all that stuff. But before they ever did any of that, they made sure the foundation was right. Because if you don't have the right foundation under your kitchen, what's going to happen? Well, the foundation is going to break and your kitchen is going to fall on the earth. Yeah, it don't matter how nice of a kitchen you built, it ain't going to last long. Right. The foundation in the old days was the balance in the blueprinting. They did that to everything to make sure they had the correct finishes, the correct clearances, everything was straight and properly aligned. They made sure the foundation was sound before they started making custom parts themselves. An engine just balanced and blueprinting sounds different. Yeah. And it, it, I have people go, why well, your engines just sound just, just, just different? And I, and I go back to the whole thing that, that Smokey said, we're building, we're building eight individual Those, engines yes. connected by a common crankshaft. Yep. So if you have the same CCs in the combustion chambers, the same deck height, that's just blueprinting, just setting the deck height. Yep. And, 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 and a lot of guys have a machine to deck the motor, but all they do is they could deck it because all they're concerned is about a gasket sealing. Yes. When a little bit extra, you could have measured the motor and square decked it. Yep. And all that means is all four corners are, are the same. You know, nowadays, like I said, back in the day, we had TRW pistons or, or Speed Pro. Yep. That, that's if you were buying aftermarket pistons. And that was basically it. Right. And then all of a sudden, you got, you know, Aries, you know, Charles and Albert. You got, and you wanted to spend $1,000 back then, and you got a custom piston. But for the most part, that wasn't a thing. So there wasn't many things that we could do. We put a, a forged piston in it. Right. But we, we, that was an awesome Ooh, thing. We yeah, put you, a forged big, piston. Big upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. But Justin, take a regular motor and balance and blueprint in it and just make the difference. Kind of going full circle, all the late model cars come to the, the extreme balance and blueprinted from the factory. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, you know, the, you don't get the same, I guess, bang for the buck. I bet you if I took an EcoBoost in here and balanced and blueprinted it, it'd be just a waste of money, basically. You know, it might be an occasional little bit of a gain. UBG checking things. So yes, I'll be checking, doing. yeah. <laughs> but take an, an early, earlier model, the 70s, 72, 75, 78, 80s, uh, uh, especially 80s. And like Chevrolet used a bob weight, a certain bob weight, and if if the piston was within you know four eight grams, whatever they, it's it's, it's a big difference. Uh, um, it's okay. Yeah, it fits that bob weight, and and because all they cared about is a bad vibration, but not a smooth running engine. Everything today is about more efficiency, better you know noise in in the cars. So they want that to be quiet. And so to achieve that, all the tolerances have gotten tighter. Surface finishes have gotten better, which- We run zero weight all. I mean, y'all may not do it, but- it, and, it, it, and that's not scary, by the way. I know it sounds it, scary, it, it, 
but it really isn't. I try to get to stuff that I do, and, and, and I'm converting an older vintage engine into, into a modern world, a balanced blue blueprinted. I try to do everything, what I, what I plan on is, some motors you, you're not gonna do it. The, 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 the bigger the main journal, whatever, but I'll try to go to 1030, and everybody yeah. wants to go, oh, I want the 2050, I wanna, I said, that's back in the day. Yeah. It's back in the day. A, you can't do that with anything with variable cam time in any way. Right, exactly, so, yeah, it's a good, good, good point. That you, the modern engines with all of the variable valve timing, be it from the cam or rocker ratios, however they do it, it's critical not to use a higher viscosity oil than what's recommended by the OEM because the oil isn't just a lubricant in those engines, it's a hydraulic fluid and you don't want to change the hydraulic function of the engine. And now they're using it as hydraulic fluid, very good. Yes. So so a variable cam timing, the way, the way that it works, there's springs on a big cam gear and there's oil pressure with a solenoid valve that closes the oil pressure off. So at stagnant, just sitting there, the springs hold it open, hold it all the way shut. Yep. And all that means is it holds the, the cam timing, it's what the cam was ground at. Yep. So whatever it was ground at, that's fine. But as the vehicle takes off, we can actually change the cam timing yep. um, and make more, more torque for takeoff. But once it gets going, it doesn't need torque anymore. No. So we can change the cam timing, right. and that's what it does. The, yep. com the computer says, hey, we're, we're moving faster now. I don't need torque, we're not taking off. Let's make more power. It opens the solenoid, that lets oil pressure, it's hydraulic, so it's, mm -hmm. now we're running hydraulic items. The solenoid opens, the cam now, the, the, the oil pressure is higher than the spring pressure, so it moves the gear inside. So now we advance the cam, okay? That's how it does that. It's all an old, old fashioned hydraulics, yep. just regular hydraulics and springs. So it's oil pressure against spring pressure. So all that's designed, okay? The computer, all that tune is all done. As you start slowing down and you get to a light, the computer says, oh, I need torque now, and I need to change my tune from highway tune, which got me better gas mileage and more power up in. So it closes off the two solenoids and the springs now, because there's no oil pressure, pushes the cam back into its natural state yep. and it reversed the cam. Yep. So old school, when the motor was worn out, we upped the, the, the viscosity. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's go ahead and put, you know, 20 weights, put 30 weights. Let, anything with the, with the variable cam timer, which is just about everything nowadays, that oil viscosity is so crucial to the tune of that motor. If it's too thick, It'll, 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 it'll do a check engine light. What it does is the computer's going through and it, it's, it's sensing everything really fast. Right, other thing too is with the modern engines, with the thinner ring packages that have lower tension, viscosity is a fancy word for resistance of flow. If I, like I have a really high viscosity oil up on my cylinders, my oil ring tension may not be enough to actually scrape it back down now I'm re leaving excess residual oil in the combustion chamber and oil typically has a lower octane value than your fuel. So you can cause detonation by leaving too much oil in the cylinder. So there's a lot of reasons why you should use the correct viscosity oil. So don't try to outthink the yeah. OEM. Everybody thinks that it's the carbon from the oil that after it got burnt that made the detonation. Yeah, the oil vapor itself it, it's, will yeah. actually make it happen. Yes, the least of the molecules um, that ignite with the least BTUs, least heat, are gonna, are gonna set off first. What I like to say, I said, you're, you're a kindergarten teacher and you got 40 kids in your, in your class mm -hmm. and you're turning the lights down and you want everybody to just settle down and all it takes is one to get up and one disturb the class, <laughs> one hyperactive, to, and all of a sudden, everybody's bouncing off. So that's what happens with the hydrocarbons in, in the cylinder, is you have a mixture of a bunch of different of, of, of chemicals and molecules, and all it takes is, as you start to compress it, heat goes up, a bar product of, of compression, yep. and all of a sudden, one little, I shouldn't use the word bastard out there, beep, poop, and one guy he gets off. up, and now all of a sudden it set off Same everybody. Yep. So oil in the cylinder, because it's a lower octane, and, and octane, I tell everybody, that's just money, that's just a band-aid for, because you can fix stuff but it, without throwing octane at it. Uh, um, octane is just, a lot of people use octane as a band-aid as opposed to, to the proper tune. Uh, yeah. um, but, but anyway, go, it's, it's... No, but you're right, because a great example of that is the modern direct injection engines. And in fact, you know, all of the oil specifications here in the US 
uh, have changed in the last few years. We went from what was a few, several years ago, APISN, which is the little symbol on the back of the donut there, on the back of the bottle. That was the rating. We went from SN to SN+, plus, and that added in some protection from detonation for the direct injection engines where we were changing the chemistry of the oil so that if there was some oil left in the combustion chamber, it would be less likely to cause a detonation problem. Now you have API SP, which is the current spec, and it's from scratch was designed for direct injection engines to mitigate that risk of having that hyperactive child mm -hmm. that, that sends everything into chaos. So those are the 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 changes, right? And that's, that's the key thing that we're trying to do here is educate everybody so they understand that, you know, engine technology from the, all the hardware parts, all the metallurgy parts, all the coatings within the engines has evolved and evolved and evolved. And you got to make sure that whether it's the ring seal or it's the correct viscosity oil for your variable valve timing or it's the correct chemistry of the oil, the right type of fuel for your direct injection engine, you got to make sure that you're following the right recipe to create the right kind of chili. That way you, you don't have a chili recipe and you, you meant to make New England clam chowder. Yeah, you're going to be really disappointed <laughs> if you made the wrong stuff. And and don't get us wrong. We're, it, it's not like, oh my God, well then uh, you've totally, uh, uh, I'm, I'm totally, this is actually should be exciting, especially for the younger people that are getting into this. Even for the older ones that are, we, we have to evolve with technology. And this is exciting. I don't know. Oh, it's we're, great. We're, we get excited about it, but well, you, it's everybody fun. should be getting excited about well, it. Because there's that old myth out there. Well, a, a motor's a motor. They're all the same. You know, you can just, you know, do what so and so has always told you to do, and everything will be fine. Well, okay. If, if Squeeze, bang, sucks. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. And there's, there's an element of truth to that. Okay. We're not trying to dismiss that. But the reality is, are you trying to lower it? work for the lowest common denominator and just get barely get by or are you trying to actually push the edge of performance do you really want to get the best you know to me as growing up as a racer you know son and a racer myself yeah you know, I, I don't want to settle for second place i, I want to do the best i can and my get, goal isn't to go out there and get third no 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 yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. you know um i don't want to be the also ran so what we're trying to do is give you the I, the perspective of understanding that you know engines from one era are going to have certain parts, certain metallurgy, certain finishes, and then an engine from another era is going to be different. But you don't have to just accept that. Well, that engine oh, yeah, was from the '60s. You can't do anything modern to it. Well, yes, you can. You, you just know what you can do to it, and it. It, adopt the right technology. Th th this is the Hemi. Our early model Hemi. This happens to be mm -hmm. a brand new. It's going to be about 572, okay. but it's old technology. Yep. But I, like, like, like Lane says, my mom always says, I get all excited on some, some different project and stuff, especially when we're going to take this, this older technology. It's a brand new. It's never been run, mm -hmm. but we're going to give it to modern technologies. Right. We're flat type of cam, gone. gone Roller gone. cam, in. Yes. You know, yes. I don't think we do you know, hardly anything with a flat yeah. type of cam anymore. Exactly. But yeah. Unless it's a restoration, a conqueror's restoration or something. Yeah. Besides that right there, that's probably about the only time we ever use that. Right. Big, okay. giant, thick rings, gone. Yeah, yes, ported yes, thin rings, yes. in. Yes, there's the diamond pistols right yeah. there. We got, you know, so we got the new one. heads, gone. Aluminum heads, Aluminum gone. Aluminum heads, yes, yes. All right, and welcome back. Video went on so long it just ended and we didn't even realize it turned off. This is video number three. Wait for video number four. What do we talk about? A little short thing. Should we balance? Should we blueprint? Yes, we should. Um, the importance of just having an engine assembly balance causes less friction. What does Lake Speed like to say? Friction is like tax. Uh, all the horsepower you make and then you got to pay the tax man and you end up with horsepower that you have. So if we can cut friction down, we'll actually get to keep some of the horsepower that we made. All right, so we talk about variable cam timing. Um, oil viscosity, the thickness of the oil actually slows down the cam reacting back to its natural state, can throw a check engine light on, can affect the tune of the engine. We're thinking, how does the oil affect the tune of the engine? It can with the new modern cars. So. Also, the viscosity of the oil can actually cause blow-by. We can actually uh, affect the ring seal. Stay tuned for video number four. That's when we turn the camera back on and we keep going. Well, as for me, I got to get back to honing this block and we'll see you on the next one.